Thanks for joining me here on Conversations for Yoga Teachers. I'm your host, Karen Fabian, the founder of Bare Bones Yoga. I'm an experienced registered yoga teacher with over 15 years of teaching experience, a certified personal trainer, and an entrepreneur. My mission is this, to help you develop into a purpose-driven, confident yoga teacher, one who truly understands anatomy and how to share it clearly and confidently so that you can help your students learn and as a result, grow your impact and connection. I strongly support and value the uniqueness of all individuals and provide a safe community where diversity is embraced. Through my mentorship and signature program called the Blueprint Learning Program, I help yoga teachers build their skills in the area of learning anatomy and along with that, help them learn important business skills and personal development ways of being that will transform them into purpose-driven teachers who make a big impact. On the podcast here, you'll get a blend of both anatomy learning, stories from teachers, interviews with others in the field, and a dose of personal development. For more information and to get on the wait list for any of my programs, see my website, barebonesyoga.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Conversations for Yoga Teachers. I'm your host, Karen Fabian, and thank you so much for joining me here today. So we're here at episode 88, and I'm recording this on Monday, August 3rd. So I hope you had a really nice weekend. All things considered, I know with um, however the COVID pandemic at this point is affecting you and your teaching and your family life and your personal life. I hope that you are well. I hope that you are healthy. And we're going to just continue moving forward and um, kind of addressing each thing as it comes up. And I know for myself, I just continue to try to keep a positive outlook and just keep moving forward. So I wanted to um, tell you a couple things before we go into this week's episode. This week's episode is actually an interview. So what I'm gonna do here is just record a short intro, let you know a little bit about my special guest, and then we'll shift over to that audio from the interview I did with him last Thursday. Um, I wanna let you know that this Thursday, which is August 6th at 11 a.m. Eastern, I'm gonna be hosting another one of my free virtual workshops, and this is gonna be on sequencing. So to sign up for that, you can DM me for the link, or I'll be posting about it all week on my Facebook page and in my Facebook group, the Bare Bones Yoga Anatomy Work Group. So um, this one will be, as I said, about sequencing. It'll be about the logic of sequencing, building a sequence, how to blend anatomy into your sequences. Uh, and then we'll go over at least one example. So you can email me questions beforehand. You can ask questions there. There'll be time for questions. These have been really fun. I've done three or four so far, and it's just been really, really inspiring to hear from people. I know sometimes it's a little bit awkward to ask questions on a Zoom conference call uh, slash virtual workshop. However, the teachers who have attended have been really, really, um, just really cool and just really willing to kind of put themselves out there and ask questions. And it's really led to some really good dialogue. So I would highly encourage you, uh, if you are free at 11 o'clock, Eastern time on Thursday to join this one and really, really make time to join it free. I'm actually hesitant to send out the recordings um, because I really want people to get the benefit of being there live. Now, having said that, I am putting the recordings in my practice portal, which is called uh, the Bare Bones Yoga Practice Portal. And I'm putting them in there as a way to give you free access to the recordings and to also give you a view into the practice portal. This is my monthly membership. It's filled with recorded sequences, guided meditations, and also live classes. And this week, the live classes, which are free, are um, Monday today at 6 p.m., Wednesday at 9 a.m., and Friday at 11 a.m. So I would love to see you uh, online practicing with me in one of those live classes. And then remember the practice portal 
is a really, really um, good entry founding member rate of only $9.99 a month. And if you join this week is the last week for that rate. And um, the last thing I want to mention in terms of just announcements and opportunities and opportunities to learn, most importantly, is that yesterday I, you know, over the past couple of months, I've been part of a bunch of 200 hour teacher trainings. And of course, they've all gone virtual because of the pandemic. And so I've been teaching regularly to a couple of different groups, more than a couple of different groups of teachers. And so I've had the chance through that process to observe how teachers learn in the context of a virtual group. And what I will say, and I, and I knew this anyway, to a certain extent from running my own uh, training program, the Blueprint Learning Program. However, in that program, much of it is self-study and there are coaching calls that I host with the teachers. In the 200 hour trainings, it's a set schedule over a set period of time and the teachers really need to show up in order to get the most out of the program, so they do. And so what I've been able to see is just how much more progress teachers can make in a virtual training program when they commit to showing up on a regular basis and more importantly, when they're part of a group learning process. Teachers are learning from other teachers' questions. There's just a lot more back and forth dialogue, um, a lot more opportunities for me to offer up different ways to present the information so that everybody has the best chance to learn. So from that experience or those experiences, I yesterday decided I was going to launch a group learning, a group training option for my program. So um, yesterday, if you were on, if you are on my mailing list, you would have seen the offer. It's basically a six week virtual training program on anatomy. And that means that at the end of six weeks, you will uh, know all about the fundamentals of anatomy for yoga. You'll have a much more expanded library of cues that you can use that people understand that share anatomy with your students. And the overall picture will just be that your confidence will be so much higher because you'll have that information in hand, you'll really know it. And when you teach from that place of really knowing, not because you're trying to be right all the time, but just you're not repeating things. You know, it's more that you know the information and therefore you can share it in understandable ways with your students. So to find out more about that, enrollment is only open until Thursday at five. You can DM me, or um, if you're on my mailing list, you'll be getting the invitations to enroll all this week. So I want to just talk to you quickly about this idea of what do you, have you ever had the experience of feeling like you're out of alignment? And I know, of course, in the context of yoga poses, that's a common phrase. Oh, that pose is out of alignment, or is it out of alignment when you do the pose this way? I want you to think about out of alignment as it relates to you and your life. And I want you to hone in on things like the job you have, maybe a relationship you have, maybe part of the relationship you have with yourself. Um, you know, something that feels off, something that doesn't feel like it's a good fit. And it might have felt like a good fit in the past. Maybe you've changed and maybe it's something that needs to shift along with you. So this idea of being out of alignment um, really kicks off the episode that we're going to go into today in the interview that I did with a friend of mine and a colleague in the wellness industry, Gary Sannon. And um, this idea of being out of alignment really comes up a lot in this episode when Gary shares with us his journey as a fitness trainer, a fitness professional, um, a bodybuilder, an entrepreneur, someone who is very committed to making an impact in his community and beyond. Um, and so I wanted to just bring that up as an overarching theme before you get into listening to the details of this extraordinary um, conversation I had with someone who really, really inspires me. And just as a prelude, I was introduced to Gary because he was highly recommended by a friend of mine um, 
as someone to go to when I wanted to work with a personal trainer. And I wanted to do that in large part because I felt like I was missing a lot in my yoga practice and running in terms of exercise and its impact on my body. So I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something that could be really targeted to certain muscle groups. And so I knew I wanted to work with a personal trainer. With my background in personal training, I knew that there, that approach would be really helpful and, and just what I was looking for. And boy, was I amazed. Working with Gary was um, for just about a year was one of the best experiences I've ever had. His knowledge is unsurpassed. His rapport is amazing. And um, I, I can't say enough about him. He also is someone that came and taught with me at one of my live events I did last year. And people just raved about him and loved him. So let me just give you a little bit about Gary and his background. So Gary Sanon is the CEO and founder of Sanu Inc., uh, which is corporations providing health and wellness consulting and services through Sanu Fitness and Media Consulting Services. He has worked in the fitness industry for 18 years as a coach, trainer, group exercise instructor, manager on both the corporate and nonprofit levels. He holds a bachelor's degree in exercise science and various certifications from the National Academy of Sports Medicine and the NCSF. He is a winning WNBF pro, um, pro natural bodybuilder, has published uh, articles for Aging Today, has been featured in the Boston Globe and the Boston Herald. He's been recognized for his work in healthy agings by Tufts University and through his work with the organization Fit for Life. And he has received the American Societies on Aging's NOMA Award for Excellence in Multicultural Aging. And his clientele has included just really everyone in different areas, athletes, uh, young people, to professionals, celebrities, politicians, special needs populations, uh, pre and postnatal women, bodybuilders, and more. So I, I think most of all, he just has a huge heart and he has just a wealth of knowledge. And I can't wait for you to hear my interview with Gary Sannon. So I'm gonna wrap up this intro right now. And then uh, the next thing you hear is my interview with Gary that happened last week. Karen, what's up? How are you? How are you? I'm good, how you doing? Good, good, good. So yeah. is it a little bit cooler over there than the last time we talked? Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely a lot cooler. I got some ACs going. Is my, I, I have the AC on right now. Can you still, can you hear me pretty good? Yeah. Okay. That's All right. Great. Awesome. That's awesome. Great. Awesome. Excellent. So how are you doing? I'm doing good. You know, yeah. can't complain. You know, yeah. good day in the office, busy day today. Yep. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad I got a slice of your time. I really appreciate it, especially because I mean, the people listening won't know that we spent like an hour on the phone, if not more, last week or whenever that was. And I remember thinking, I should be recording this whole thing because this is such a great podcast episode for my listeners. So I really appreciate you coming back on to the phone, quote unquote, to uh, to chat with me again. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Appreciate you having me. Yeah. So we can actually just dive right in. Sometimes when I do these kinds of things, I do a little preview thing. But since we've talked so much already, um, I feel like I want to just try to encapsulate some questions for you that will allow you to kind of just branch out into what you were sharing before. Because when I was listening, I was thinking, um, there's so much here for the people that listen to my podcast that, I mean, once they hear about your background, they'll, because I want you to go into that, they'll have a sense mm -hmm. of where you get from. And although they're yoga teachers and not in the personal training space, there are so many overlaps there that I feel like everything that you're taking on and just kind of forging through is going to be really information that hits home for them and is really inspirational. So maybe a good place to start is I have your bio and I'll kind of share that in a little pre 
to, uh, pre thing that I do that mm -hmm. listeners will hear before they hear this conversation. Um, so why don't you just tell us in your own words, you know, they'll hear of me reading that, but tell us in your own words, what you do and how you got into this area of wellness. Definitely. Um, so I have hey, been, your name, oh, I have oh sorry today. about this. Episode. So, <laughs> so my name is, my name is Gary Sannon. Um, I'm a fitness professional. Uh, really at this point, I'm just an entrepreneur. Um, there's so many different things that I find myself being interested in. Um, that's where I came up with the concept of Sunu Inc. Um, so Sunu Inc. is my uh, parent company. Uh, the different divisions of Sunu are going to be Sunu Fitness and then Sunu Media Group. And then eventually down the line, we're going to have um, a real estate component. So those are the three you know, fields that I'm really, really interested in. Let me, um, let me just stop you there for one second, just in case they're listening. So Sunu... When they hear it, I want them to know it's S I N E W. Correct. And because my listeners are mostly yoga teachers. I mean, when I first, because I've known you for a while, and for the listeners, Gary was my personal trainer, and he came recommended to me from a good friend who raved about him. So I like sought him out and kind of sort of you know, harassed him in a way to take me on because he wasn't really going to take on more clients. And I just kind of nudged him hard enough that he was like, all right, just to get this girl off my texting, I think I'll just say, fine, I'll take her. Um, but I want them to know, and I was kind of curious, since it's S-I-N-E-W, what's the genesis of that name? And what does it gotcha. refer to? What does it mean to you? Okay. All right. So, so new, what that means, um, it refers, if you look it up, to connective tissue. Um, so when I think about connective tissue, um, I think about the inner workings of the body, right? So a major aspect of what I do, and there's three pillars, one of them is going to be community, the second is going to be connectivity, and then the last one is going to be strength. So connectivity um, directly relates to Sanu from the standpoint of I'm trying to figure out the inner workings. If it's fitness, the inner workings of the body. If let's say somebody has an injury, let's say somebody, say somebody's trying to get to goal. How does everything work together succinctly in order to get that person healthier or to get that person to their particular goal? Um, also, when it comes to Sanu, my last name is Sanin, so it's a play on my last name. It's me entering into the field from the standpoint of I'm completely independent, so it's a new me, it's a new Sanin, it's Sanu. Um, oh, oh, Sanu, N-E-W. I yeah, like yeah, yeah. that. And then my last, last name is S-A-N-O-N, so it's a kind of like a play on my last name, too. Oh, okay. Yep. okay. And, then, and then the last aspect of Sanu, um, refers to uh, strength. Um, when I think about strength, I think about this as a movement. Um, the way that I'm trying to do fitness is, is different, right? It's very personal. Um, obviously, this is a lot of it's going to be digital. We're in a virtual space, you know, so, it, you know, I think about the strength and what I'm doing. And, you know, also the initial effect when people train with me is the first thing they say is, oh, I feel a lot stronger. I didn't think I was going to be able to do X, Y, and Z. Um, so, you know, it all, always refers back to that strength, new beginning, and then also like the playback uh, of my name. Okay, awesome. So it sounds like you, I mean, I, I know the process. I want you to share a little bit about how you ended up creating this company, this entrepreneurial, you know, kind of um, project from what you were doing before. Because when I say I worked with you before, I worked with you when you were working for someone else for a company, for a, a large fitness company. So tell people about how you ended up where you are here um, from where you were before. So um, I've been in the industry for 18 years as a fitness professional. Um, so prior to this, uh, my most recent uh, job was working as an area fitness manager you know, for a large uh, corporation. Um, loved it. I had the opportunity, you know, the company treated me well. I had the opportunity to do a lot of what I wanted to do, which was mentorship of younger trainers, similar to like what you're doing where, you know, you'll go beyond uh, the typical yoga training and then you take it more in depth. So you take it to a whole different level. So when I think about the field, the reason why I got into management was to be able to have that same type of effect so that people 
you know, especially newer trainers that are coming in, um, you know, they'd be able to think outside of the box, be able to think for themselves, be able to troubleshoot. Um, and then really, I just wanted to have a positive effect of the, on the industry as a whole. So this whole pandemic, um, and even just thinking about what's going on as a whole with the civil unrest, uh, you know, it just made me realize that, you know, I really want to get back into doing more things with the community and for the community and be able to actually go out to people. So a limiting factor with working with the corporation is that you can only work with people that come to see you or you can only work with the people that the corporation allows you to work with. Um, I just realized like I have so much more to give, so much more to offer, um, and I just don't want to be limited. So this was a perfect opportunity for me to start to branch off um, and do things that, you know, I was interested in. One of them, you know, obviously fitness is my bread and butter. I love it, live it, breathe it, you know, but the other aspect of it was the media. Um, so I ended up doing a lot of work where I was covering a lot of the rallies. Um, long story short, I, I, I ended up, you know, getting involved particularly with one particular newspaper, which led to a bunch of other connections, um, which led to me doing a lot more things with media as far as like marketing, branding, uh, videography, photography. Um, I have other folks that work with me. Um, and knowing that I want to scale my business. And this is one of the things that we talked about as far as like from a fitness standpoint is just, you know, the importance of being able to scale and being able to replicate yourself and giving more people access to what you do. So knowing that I want to do that and that, you know, I'm going to need to have folks that work with me as far as like from a social media standpoint, rather than, than having individuals do individual projects for me, I collectively grab people that I've, that I, saw with talent um, and I actually have them working with me underneath some new media group. So I have a whole entire team that does my media and my marketing and my branding, um, which is going to allow me to be able to do what I do best. And that's just like fitness. Um, mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, um, you know, I've been able to help other people uh, work on their media and their marketing and their branding through my particular company. So just out of interest, I was able to start, you know, um, the media group. Got it. Now, let me ask you, when you were working for this large fitness company and you decided to shift to doing things more on your own, I know for a lot of people listening, and especially now with yoga teachers who maybe for years have been working for a particular studio, and now that studio may be closed permanently or temporarily because of the pandemic. How did you find it within yourself? Like, how did you know what to do? And how did you get past the resistance to do it? Because a lot of times it's the resistance to going out on your own that people struggle with. And so they kind of sit idle in the space of there's nothing I can do. So how did you overcome? Did you have any of those concerns? I guess is my first um, I think I was just ready for it, you know, so my mind was made up, you know, um, it's, I gave, I give an example all the time. It's like, if your house was on fire, um, you wouldn't be worried about your lawn that's burning down. You'd worry about putting out the house and you're putting out the fire, right, and saving your house. So when I looked at, you know, a lot of what was going on as far as like with civil unrest and, you know, um, just there just being so much division, I realized that that's such a huge problem. Mm -hmm. I can always go back to corporate. I can always go back, you know, to doing whatever I was doing beforehand. You know, it's really important at some point to really bet on yourself. If you really believe in yourself, you know, it doesn't need to be an all or nothing process. So meaning that, hey, I can spend, maybe I can spend 20% of the week where I'm just working on my own thing and working on myself and working on my branding and, you know, working on a website, um, you know, working on a way to develop a class that I might want to offer to people on my own. Um, I can spend 20% of the week doing that and I might, and I might spend 80% of the week on my job. Right? right. But whatever you think you want to do for the rest of your life, you need to start today. And that's what I realized. It's like, I, with this break, uh, with the pandemic, I just realized I didn't spend enough time with my family. Um, I love my dogs. I didn't spend enough time with my dogs. Um, you know, um, 
my friends, my loved ones. Like I was making money and I was making a career for myself, but I really, this pandemic allowed me to sit back and be like, okay, well, I bought this expensive coffee table, but I never ever actually sip coffee on it because I'm always running away. And mm-hmm. it's like, you know, that the trade-off, it really, it became a no brainer for me. It's just like, I just have to figure out a way to be able to do this for the rest of my life. Because right now I just feel better about myself. I feel better about the service that I'm providing. I feel better, you know, about the way that I'm interacting with people that are in my life. So if it's really important to you, it's just, I just start off with writing down goals, Karen. Right. So I just started prioritizing, well, what is, what does my ideal day look like? And when I really took a look at it, I was like, hey, my ideal day doesn't look like anything I'm doing right now. Like, I'm always running. I'm always stressed. Like, my body my body was breaking down. I got into management, you know, for the past three years, and my body was really breaking down. My joints were inflamed. Why? Because I was sitting down all the time. Um, and it's like, I looked at it, and I'm like, well, what am I really giving up? Because mm-hmm. I can always go back to that life, you know, that – supposed great life I can always go back to it really easily but I I can I can never take back time right you know I can I can never take back moments so for me you know it became like a clear decision it's like whatever I'm doing right now is closer to the way I want to feel and close to the service that I want to provide for the rest of my life so let's find a way and mm-hmm. everything that I'm interested in you know if I feel like it's something that I can provide as a service to somebody I'm going to write that down as an idea and I'm going to find a way to make it profitable. Mm -hmm. Where there's a will, there's always a way. If you think about all the barriers, then you're never going to actually move. If you actually just take one step, you realize that one step wasn't that bad. I just have to take another one, then another one, then another one. Next thing you know, you've taken so many steps, you can't even look back because you don't know where you came from. It's like, all I can do is just move forward. Mm -hmm. I really like how you said the thing about 20% because I think that is something that sometimes people get really hung up on. They think it's an all or nothing. And I like that you kind of laid out an option to, hey, maybe you continue with your full-time job, but you have this passion for something, something else, or let's say a yoga teacher listening wants to start teaching on their own and outside of the studio create some kind of online offer and they feel like if I don't completely quit my job and dedicate myself to building some kind of online presence it's not going to work it sounds like what you're saying is there's a middle ground there yeah definitely I mean I don't think especially when you're first starting off like if you don't have a savings right. um, I, def- I definitely don't recommend quitting your job that's that's mm-hmm. just that just makes no sense um, right. and so on my part, it doesn't make any sense. Right. I think I think you take calculated risks. So yeah. if that means that, hey, I can start off with something that's really small and it doesn't take too much effort to do that thing. Like the internet has made more millionaires than, than college and universities have. So it takes two seconds to turn on, turn on your phone and just start speaking. Right. right? If you start speaking, you're going to get an audience of people that, that, that want to actually listen to you you recognize, you know, what the problem is. And then you also recognize what, what the solution is. Once you recognize what the solution is, you become that product that people are going to actually want if you can become the solution. Um, you know, so I think that that's, that's another thing. It's like really having a strategic plan around the way that you're going to approach becoming an entrepreneur. Also, like, you know, I know when it, what you just said right there, it was like, you wanted to train with me. Why did you want to train with me? Because of a recommendation, of a referral, because someone spoke really highly of my service. So the service is going to speak for itself. And, and if you have a quality service that also answers a problem and provides a solution to that problem, um, then all of a sudden you're going to be in, um, in a lot more demand. You know, yeah. and a lot, a lot of it too comes from yourself. Like Karen, you know your worth and you know your value. I know my worth and I know my value, which was why, like you know, it was tough for me. Like even when we work, when we worked together, like it was like, all right, like I could at this point, I can pick and choose who I want as my clientele because I know the service that I'm going to provide, and people can speak on that service for me. The website, all it's going to do is allow people to gather and give testimonials. 
Right. You know, so now people have a direct location to go to to see the service. But at the end of the day, you didn't come for the gym, you came for me. Right. So if, if everyone kind of takes a step back and really thinks, think about that statement, how many people change their schedules and change, their, change what they do in life, maybe vacations, to be able to work with you? because your service is so valuable and, it, right. and it's something that people want. Um, so if you're able to create that type of dynamic, then you're gonna be able to create uh, you know, a business for yourself and that business is gonna be your passion, it's gonna be your purpose, and it's also gonna feed you for the rest of your life and you're never gonna look at it like work. Right, right. And it sounds like too, what you're talking about is how, you know, from a marketing perspective, how you develop a personal brand. Because whether you're in fitness or yoga teaching or anything else where maybe you're a, a digital marketer where everything you offer is online, you're the face of the brand and the programs and products that you have are an extension of you. So when you were saying before, it's as easy as turning on your phone now because the internet gives us a highway to so many people. Um, I totally agree with that. One of the things I wonder, though, is do you, I mean, you obviously have ease talking in front of people. You have a lot of experience doing that and teaching groups of people, individuals. Um, what would you say to someone who may be listening and thinking, that sounds great, but it sounds really easy for him because he obviously um, is comfortable speaking in front of people and has a lot of experience doing that. I'm afraid to show myself. I mean, think of a yoga teacher who might be newer or who might not feel ready and at the same time might really feel uh, a draw to create something. How do you create that personal brand when you have that fear around showing yourself? I, I am still, I do not like to be at the forefront. I do not like to, uh, you know, when it comes to public speaking, I, I still don't like it. Like it's something that I had to learn because I was like, you know what? The only way a closed mouth isn't going to get fed. And the only way for me to, to put myself out there for people to understand what I know and what I can share and what I have to offer is for me to speak on it. So even if that means like, hey, you know what? I'm going to do a pre-recorded video, right? And I'm going to and I'm going to record myself. I can go back. I can edit it. I can make mistakes. I can do all that. And then I, and then I put it out there that's fine you can take that you can take that approach eventually over time it's just practice it's like anything else it's like you know how do you how are you able to balance on one leg how are you able to do a handstand like for most people they're going to look at it and be like that's impossible it's, it's not, I, I can't fathom it it's the same exact thing it's like anything else it's, it just takes practice and you just have to figure out what works for you right. um you know, so it might start off with just pre-recorded videos and then eventually you might be able to do like a live and, you know, be able to speak. But, you know, what I started realizing was like, you know, what I had to do was just realize that this is something I'm interested in and take away the audience, right? Forget, like, almost like close my eyes and just be like, mm -hmm. hey, like, just talk about what you like. Because mm -hmm. most of the time when, when you talk about what you like, people are actually interested in it. Most of the time, right. like I, I started realizing like when I'm talking about fitness, everyone kind of leans in and they kind of are just like, the ears are just wide open. So I'm like, what's the difference? I'm just talking about something I like. So instead of me, what allowed me to be able to uh, get better with public speaking and even teaching classes uh, was just that. Like, I'm just doing what I like and I love this. I have to constantly keep in mind, like just remind yourself like, I love this. What's the other option? You know, you can put on a suit and tie, you know, um, you know, you can, you can go work a desk job or you can be in short shorts and a t-shirt and learn to be comfortable wearing shorts and a t-shirt and, and you have the ability to help somebody out just by speaking. Like think about how blessed we are to be in the, the actual industry where I can just help somebody just by speaking, just right. by giving it, just by giving advice. Um, you know, so I think we, what we need to do is to take off the pressure take off the pressure of trying to be perfect. Yeah. Um, perfection is, it's, I, I chased that for, for, for almost a decade and I just was making myself miserable. The second I let go of trying to be perfect around everything, um, mm -hmm. trying to have a perfect image, trying to speak perfectly, um, and the second I let go of that, I just became a lot happier and I became a lot more successful. 
Yeah. And doesn't, uh, in a, on a certain level, doesn't letting go of perfection allow you to move forward? I mean, think of all the things you have to do when you're starting a business from creating the website to starting Facebook groups to doing whatever else you're doing. Um, if you're constantly trying to do it perfectly, you'll never get anything done. No, definitely not. And that's the that's the practice of fitness in particular. That's that's the practice of yoga. There is no perfection. You're in your own practice. So it's like right. the same rules that apply. And I got and I got this, I finally got it when my buddy told me this. He's like, the same way that you approach fitness, if you did that with business, you'd be a millionaire. So the He's like, you just you the, the element, the elements just cross over, and it's like this, the lessons that we learn in 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 practice, especially like when you're giving dialogue with yoga. If you really actually listen to the to the to the dialogue, it's like these are life lessons. Right. It has, it has little to do as oh, sorry, it has it has to do with exercise, but they're really life lessons. Right. Like letting letting go, staying staying in your own zone, being in your own practice, being yep. in your own space. So if we apply these things when it comes to business, how can we fail? Because right. I'm not looking at the next man. The only reason why we get nervous is because we're comparing ourselves to somebody else. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think too, in both of our industries, yoga and fitness, there are a lot of people. I mean, I guess you could even say, even with the pandemic and its effects on both industries, it's still a pretty crowded space. So mm -hmm. how do you, like, how do you, dif like, differentiate yourself? I was going to say, like, if you meet somebody, how do you talk about what you do so that you're mm -hmm. able to reflect your own personal style? Maybe just speak a little bit on that. Is that something that concerns you or do you feel like I'm so in my zone I know what I can offer it doesn't bother me who else is doing it I'm I'm more of that you know because I'm very much somebody that that likes to partner with other people I'm very much someone that likes to like um I promote other people on, on my own on my own page because I'm, I'm all about cooperation. And what I realize is like, especially with corporates, it's, if you really understand the way that corporations are built and how they work, is basically like if we wanted to do real estate right now, if I, want, if I wanted to buy a property, um, and then let's say another one of my buddies wants to buy a property, then another one wants to buy a property. If all of a sudden we pull over all of our funds together, now all of a sudden we can buy this huge property and we, can, and we can have more people that we end up working with. So when I look at fitness as a whole, it's like I do X, Y, and Z, and I know that I do X, Y, and Z really, really well. There may be other folks that do X, Y, and Z, but these are my bread and butters, right? Mm -hmm. So when I, when I talk to people, and, and, and part of it too is like having that confidence in yourself, and you're constantly learning too. So if you're constantly learning, then that puts you in a position where you're always going to have an advantage because you're, you're, you'll be able to work with so many different types of people. And also like your energy, like my energy is very open and inviting. And like, you know, I share openly like what I'm doing and I'm not worried about people trying to copy me or, 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 wow. or I don't look at other people and try to copy them because what I'm doing is inside of here and it's inside of here. It's not written down. How can you know what the next step is? When I, the next step is inside of here and inside of here. So with that approach, it's like, I'm never worried about what the next man is doing. And the amount of people, like just think about right now in Boston, how many people, how many people are out of shape in Boston right now? Just Boston. How many people right now in, in, in Boston uh, actually go to gyms? Now, how many people don't go to gyms? Now, am I worried about someone who has 50 clients? Or am I worried about the other uh, uh, 500,000 people that I have access that I have access to that don't know me and don't know this person? I'm worried about that 500,000. If you keep worrying about other people's business, then your business is never going to be successful. If you stay in your zone, you stay in your lane, and you stay and you stay focused on what your path is. My path is my path. Someone else's journey is someone else's journey. It's just like when I have clients, even if we were within a group. Whatever that one person is doing has nothing to do with the next person. Right. And I always and I always say that. Like when I you're not here competing with anyone else but yourself. 
I can look at other people and I might see, all right, form and I might borrow this and, you know, okay, that actually looks good. And I might, I might find a way to be able to use that. But at the end of the day, this is my journey. And it's really important that you have something that's authentic and that you approach it in that fashion. As long as you do, whatever you're doing is, it, it's, it's going to shine. You're going to shine. At some point, it, you know, people are going to see what you're doing is so powerful. And that's what I get. Like when people come to my classes, it's like, you know, they want to, they want to keep coming. Then they want to tell people about it. Oh, can I bring a friend? Can I do this? And it's like, I'm like, yeah, I love it. Like, thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, but well, how about if we came over here? You should do this and you should do it. And people, people are just so excited for you. And it's because what you, what I'm doing is really authentic. It's mine. I own it. I'm not borrowing it from anybody else. Like I, I determine, you know, what goes on with the classes. I determine what goes on with my social media. Like I'm my own boss. I'm the creator, you know, and, and you have to look at what you do the same exact way. It's like, there's a million yoga classes. Why do they line up to come and take your class? Karen? Like why are people lining up to come and utilize your services? There's a million people that are teaching anatomy and physiology. Cause I'm not worried about what other people are doing. I can only control myself. Right, right. So let's give people a sense of, and I, I'm kind of curious about this too, because I, I, I have a sense of what your day was like before. And I can imagine you were like in the gym, sitting down, as you say, a lot in between working with clients, you were meeting with other trainers that reported to you and mentoring them and supporting them in their work with clients. What does your day look like now? Uh, just completely different. So, you know, most of my day is just geared towards my personal business. So every, every, all the energy that I put in beforehand for a, a corporation, for somebody else, I'm just putting it into myself, right? So at the end of the day, it's like, I pick and choose how hard I'm working. Um, but every day I have a strategic plan. So I start off, you know, with my social media. I have to make sure, you know, I'm posting um you know marketing my services providing information to people on my social media so i look at my instagram i look at my facebook i make sure that i have at least a post or two plus uh you know i'll work on um you know my next post for the next for the next day or for the evening or whatever the case may be um you know I'm reaching out to people. So I do a lot, a lot of follow-ups. So if someone came to a class, I make sure like, you know, I'm following up with them, seeing how they're doing. You know, I start, you know, following up to, to, to get ready for my next classes too. Um, because as of right now, it's just, it's all dropping, you know? So it's a, it's, it's a little bit more work. Eventually, like I'm gonna have like, you know, where you can just purchase packages for classes and whatnot. But right now it's all dropping. So I'm doing a lot of work as far as just staying in touch with people. Um, businesses also too I'm, I'm reaching out to businessing businesses seeing how like i can connect with them seeing how uh potentially we can have like a partnership you know with them too um you know so there's a there's a, there's a lot of that uh then on top of it you know um I'm still training on my own right making sure that i, I stay. You how, the, yeah. how are you finding time for that yeah so i always make that a priority every single day so you know, I think about different things that I need to do on a daily basis. So it's cardio, um, strength training, and then a lot, a lot of mobility work, a lot of flexibility work. Um, so I make sure that I set time for that on a daily basis. Um, and then uh, doing my, and making sure like I connect with my partners that I'm working with too. Um, so my media people, people that are working on, on my website, my videographer, um, you know, also the businesses that I am working on their business, you know, helping them as far as like marketing and whatnot, you know, I, I, uh, you know, make sure that I reach out with them on a daily basis. Too. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about, cause I think the piece of what you shared that will really interest people is the classes you're doing. And for other, for people who are listening, who aren't yet on your Instagram page, because I am, I know that since the pandemic, with the gyms closed, even though here in Boston, they just recently opened, um, what you're doing outside. So tell us a little bit about how the idea for that came up and how you set that up. Because people listening anywhere in the country or world really might be thinking of right now teaching yoga outside and they might be kind of hung up on, how am I gonna do that? How am I going to outreach to people? How am I going to get the physical space available to do it? 
Um, so anything about that, I think would be cool to share. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, so for me, it just started off with just going, doing my own workouts outside, you know, like I didn't want to be indoors. Right. So I started off, you know, just working out outside and whenever I'd work out outside, I just throw a camera on I'd video. It's my dog popping up. Um, I throw a camera on I'd video. Um, and then, uh, he likes to be, in- I wish, I wish the listeners could see you've got the two pit bulls, right? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, what is your so, name? CeeLo uh, and Deja. Okay, right, okay. I saw them that one day on Instagram. I was like, oh, is, are those your dogs? And that's a commitment. You've got these two big dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's another, that's another part of it is like, you know, I just want to be a better dog dad. And just yeah. be able to walk them whenever I want to walk them, hang out with them. Yeah, you know. I'm sure they're really happy to have more time with you and not be alone from like seven to seven at night or whatever it is. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So get so, so get back to the classes, yeah. Yeah, so the classes, it just started off I was going outside, doing my workout, it's on my own. I had a bunch of equipment. Um, you know, so I was able to get really great workouts as you know, people would walk by and you can kind of just see them just kind of staring and I just was I just talked to them, just like, Hey, would you want to work out? You know, and, and like literally I just had them start jumping into my workout. They're like, Oh, when are you gonna do this again? And then that's how the classes came about. I started reaching out to different people, like, hey, like, you know, I or if I, I pay attention to social media, if someone's in Boston or close to the area and I see that they're fitness enthusiasts, you know, I'd, I'd send them a video like, hey, you should you should come and check out one of my classes. You know, um, if I see someone walking down the street, they have, you know, a yoga mat or whatever the case may be, start talking about fitness. Like, hey, what are you doing for a workout? Like, and, and literally, like, I think, because this time, like everyone's just distancing so much. If you're polite, if you're nice, it almost catches people aback and they're just like, cool, I want that energy. I want to say, you know, I want to be around you. And it's literally just one of those things like where you just have to invite people. I think, you know, just don't overcomplicate it, especially like when it comes to something like yoga, you have sisters, you have cousins, you have friends whatever just tell them like hey i want you to help me out with my business and on top of it you're going to get a great workout i just need everyone to be on video so you teach the class you throw a camera on with you teaching the class cut it edit it uh you know you cannot edit it just put it out there someone's going to be interested in it right and you just keep doing it you keep doing it you make it a regular you make it a regular habit eventually over time people are going to be interested in it and when you see people walking by don't be afraid to talk to them don't be afraid to approach them i know i know we're in a pandemic so i do it you know um in a joking kind of way where it's very inviting, but at the same time, you know, I'm very respectful of people's spaces. Same thing like when I teach my classes, everyone's at their own individual stations. We do circuit training. So you're not, you know, it allows people to be able to socialize, but still social distance. Right. Um, you know, and I think that that's really important. It's just, I just think it's just, just getting out there and just being inviting. And, you know, there's people that are outside working out right now. They need your help. Like, it, it, you know, if you, if you don't look at it that way, um, then you're not going to be successful from a business standpoint. It's like, I feel like I can help anybody. So I'm going to offer my services to anybody. Right. You know, if, you know, and yeah, go ahead. Well, I was say, so how are the students that are coming to your classes, how are they reacting to practicing outside versus practicing in the gym? Because I know for yoga students, I know a couple of studios are doing outdoor classes if they have space and I yeah. haven't been to one. So I'm not familiar with like how the vibe is or if people are kind of wanting to keep other people away from them. I mean, yoga communities tend to be very touchy feely and, oh, so good to see you and all of that. So how do you find people receiving your fitness services outdoors? Everyone loves it. Because yeah. we don't we don't we don't get a lot of time when we're outdoors and you know it it feels like the way I set the class up like it's a, it's a, it's different because it's I, I call it strength camp like boot camps like you might just be doing like a bunch of burpees and you know yeah. some various exercises like I teach functional training I teach proper movement like there's still it's just like you know if you if you were to teach uh, a yoga class it's not a it's not just yoga it's like yeah it's you anatomy. people are just flailing all over the place no, right no no no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm a coach more than I'm a trainer 
you know, and just like you, like you're an educator more than you're just a yoga instructor. So it's like yeah. you bring it, you bring that into 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 the outdoor environment. It's different, um, mm -hmm. and people are like, whoa, this feels different. And what it brings people back to also is like their athletic roots. The first thing people start talking about when they, oh my god, like I used to do this in football, or when I did track, or when I did you know basketball or wrestling. Oh, it feels like we're just playing. That's what it feels like. So. Oh. So there's a, it, it's almost like it's a distraction. You don't realize how much work you're doing, but I set up an outdoor gym. So there's dumbbells, there's barbells, there's TRX, you know, there's BOSUs, there's all that same equipment. We're just doing that stuff outdoors. And because it's like, you know, because it's, it's not a, such a huge group. Um, so I keep the groups no more than 15 people um, because it's, you still get so much of that individual attention. Um, and then there's still the cooperation where it's like when I'm moving to the next circuit, I'm telling the person behind me, like, oh, you, this is how you do the exercise. So I do all these little things so that there's still the interaction um, and people are just very respectful. And mm -hmm. a lot of times what happens too, it's like, you're not just coming there alone, you're coming there with somebody you know. And then by the end of it, it's like, you know, I make sure because the community piece is so important to me. Um, I have people from all over the place. Like I teach in East Boston right now, mostly in Quincy. But I have people that come over from uh, Weymouth. I have someone that came from New Hampshire. I have someone, you know, I have people that are coming from Back Bay. I have people that, you know, that are coming from Chelsea, Dorchester, all these different areas. Typically, they probably wouldn't uh, socialize as much. But now all of a sudden, we're creating a different community and we also create dialogue. So with, with that, um, you know, it addresses the issues that I was having with all the civil unrest, right? So it's like, if we can start to create more dialogue and you have a program that provides, uh, you know, more of a community feel, more of networking, you know, the ability to pull people from different backgrounds. In one class, I had a politician, I had uh, a police officer, I had a firefighter all within one class and a teacher within one class, right? And, and you know, these are different groups. When you think about it, like they all have different reasons where they could be angry at each other, right? But what it allowed us to do is like, we're just working out. And next thing you know, it's like, oh, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? And then they just start connecting social media. Oh, you, you know, we need to get a workout together outside of class. So I'm creating that community feel, which is one of the pillars of my, of, of Sunu, which is community uh, connectivity you know, understanding the inner workings of the body and then just strength. When you leave the class, everyone just feels empowered, you know, and that's that's one of the major things like with, with programming is if you if you have that feel, if you have that, something that's like organic and authentic and it's like, how can you not want those three things? How can you not want to be, you know, closer to people? Even though we're socially distanced, I'm still closer to you and now I met a new friend. Yeah. You know, now now I have people within my classes that do business together because, you know, this person does marketing. Oh, my business needs X, Y, and Z. So now they start, they, now they connect. And now there's like a personal feel, you know, when they're connecting where there's going to be also that trust too, because I know you, we work out together and, you know, it's not just, and I'm, I, I have to see you again. Like you can't, you can't like, uh, you know, screw me over because like Gary's our connection. Right. You know? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think too, as you were describing that, and I want to definitely spend a few moments talking about the issues around the civil unrest and what that means to you. And I think this is a good bridge because when you were just talking about that, it kind of reminds me of because you're essentially training in a gym without walls, you're creating a way for people to meet and to work out together when before there were the walls. And so someone from one part of the city might never go through the door of a gym in another part of the city. And now you're in a gym without walls and anybody can come. And so you've kind of removed the barriers, the physical barriers and created interaction between people who, you know, that's one of like the biggest challenges in that's been coming up around all of what's happening around police brutality and racial injustice and systemic racism, this whole issue of access and where there is no access, there is no interface and where there is no interface, there is no conversation and where there is no conversation, there's just more barriers. So both physical and conversational and all of it. So it's just, I think, I didn't realize that was happening, that you were getting people from so many different parts of 
the state or the city or however you want to phrase it. Um, and that's a really amazing thing that as a, maybe you didn't even realize that was going to happen. And now it is happening. Yeah, I mean, that was part of my vision, you know, because I just, I just realized that, you know, especially too, like, um, you know, I've been in the corporate world for a long period of time, um, you know, doing this for like 18 years. Um, I've run nonprofits, like I've done different speaking engagements, I've won national awards, and, you know, and it was just wherever I would go, um, there wasn't too many people that looked like me. Right? Well, so I like, think you're not. Remember, okay, so I'm, so, so, but, oh, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm African American, I'm of Haitian descent, um, you know, I'm, I'm 37 years old, so think about, you know, where I started off from, I started off in this field, like, when I was 19 years old, um, so a lot of times, like, when I'd go to conferences, or even, like, when I'd, you know, me sitting, uh, most recently in my last position, you know, being a higher up, uh, you know, as an area fitness manager, there really wasn't that many, there wasn't much diversity. Um, and even within the gym, like the gyms that I worked for, you know, they were in the Back Bay area. There's not really as much diversity. In both know, the and, staff and the clientele. In the clientele, both, right? And, and even, but especially throughout my career, as you move up the corporate chain, there's less and less diversity. Like I'll go to a room, you know, let's say there's 40 people in the room, you know, there's maybe, um, you know, maybe five in totality that are all, that are of a different race aside from Caucasian, right? right. And, and, you know, what that made me realize also is like, you know, I took a step back and I'm like, there's also a problem with corporate America. Like, and, and, and the, the, there's a huge problem if, if that's the representation because it doesn't represent, you know, what the population really is. Right. Um, you know, so for me, it's like, again, my job, they, they, at the time, treated me well, you know, um, you know, uh, potentially after a promotion, like, I was just in a good position, like, right. but it was just like, I want to be able to not only do more as far as bringing communities together, but then also um, it's inspire younger, younger African Americans and Latinos and really minorities to, to be like, hey, you know what, you can do a business of your own, you can be an entrepreneur, you can, you can, you can still make a huge impact. Um, let me show you, I'm, I, I, I can show you the way, you know, so a lot of, you know, another aspect of my business is there's a mentorship component of it. Okay. Um, you know, so that mentorship piece is going to allow uh, for me to be able to coach younger trainers, um, you know, people that may want, that may be, you know, uh, confused about their career path or may not understand, like, you know, what, what direction they should be taking, you know, to be, for me to be able to provide that as a service to them too. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me a little bit about, you know, because in both the yoga industry and the fitness industry, I think there probably are similarities when you look at the demographics of both trainers, teachers, and clientele. And I guess to a certain extent, it might change depending on where you live and what part of the city you're in. Although I even think when I think about Boston, there probably are different parts of Boston where there aren't as many yoga studios as other parts. So like if you compare the Back Bay to Roxbury, you know, you might not see yeah. any Studios in Roxbury, and that's within maybe a five-mile difference. So, what are your thoughts around just access for people of all races and backgrounds to be able to access fitness services? And it sounds like you're really on a mission to change that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's, it's just so important. You know, we know that you know if you're at risk to be adversely affected by COVID, it's, it's because your health is poor. You know, it, it literally comes down to that. So, you know, with the population of people that are that are most being impacted by COVID, you know, we can talk about immigrants as a whole. Um, we can talk about, you know, the poverty line. Um, in, you know, in particular, like if you're of, you know, a poor, if you're from a poor community. Um, and then when we start breaking down race, you know, it's in particular African-Americans and Latino, right? Mm -hmm. So... A lot of that has to do with education, um, you know, so it's not just about working out. It's not just about the fitness. That's why, like, you know, I also do virtual stuff. Um, so right now, 
um, through another company. I'm working with the U program, which is a, a, a program in Boston, you know, for youths, the age demographic is between 14 to 24. You know, what I do is, you know, I'll teach a different health topic to the group. Um, a lot of these kids are in DYS. A lot of them, you know, um, you know, may not be from the best circumstances, um, you know, but what I do is like, I'll educate them. Everything is done virtually, um, you know, so I'll, teach a different educational topic around health and wellness, and then we'll do, you know, physical activity afterwards. Oh. So, you know, that's another, that's another thing too, with this virtual world, it allows us to be able to work with so many different people all throughout the world. So definitely we don't want to think about limiting ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the importance of, you know, what I've created with my business is a mobile and a virtual business. It's, it's, that's the cornerstone of it. And, most of my training that I do right now is virtual, um, you know, and I have people that I work with all over the world. I work with, you know, people in Mexico, you know, someone I've worked with in Amsterdam, um, in Switzerland, um, you know, I have people in uh, other states, Florida, Georgia, you know, uh, California. It's like, oops, sorry about that. So all these, all these different, all these different, uh, you know, states and countries that I'm working with, you know, so that's another thing. It's like, we don't, we're no longer limited because of the internet. We're no longer limited to people yeah. just having to come to us, you yeah. know? So if you're an instructor, you know, you want to think about that too, especially if you speak another language, um, you know, you're at a greater advantage because now you can do stuff where you offer your services, you know, to people in your particular language. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So... Just to kind of, kind of wrap up this one component, where do you, where do you want things to go in, in not so much the world, although it's a microcosm in mm -hmm. fitness around this issue of diversity. Where would you like to see things? And and even even though yoga, I mean, I kind of think of yoga and personal training under health and wellness as a general yeah. umbrella. What kinds of changes would you like to see? Like I even think for myself, I've been teaching for 15 years and I haven't seen a lot of black men and women in my classes. And mm -hmm. it's not like I haven't welcomed them. I just haven't seen them. Right. And so when this whole um, um, movement really became much more vocal um, at the end of well, beginning of June, I started really reflecting on how many teachers do I know who are black and how many mm -hmm. students have I seen who are black? Mm -hmm. And I really haven't seen a lot. And so then I started to think about, well, where are the studios where I teach? And, you know, just other aspects who, where are we finding teachers to hire? And I know a lot of studios are really beginning to create diversity programs to address these concerns um where would you like to see things go i think it starts with the youth so i would definitely would like to see um more access for youths and then more exposure right so if we start exposing kids to fitness and yoga and 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 all all different areas then it's one it's going to allow them to be able to see what they're actually really interested in Right. Um, and then number two, what it does is it creates these young adults that they grow up doing these activities. So they're going to always think about it as a norm, right? Mm -hmm. So if right now, if let's say we had, uh, you know, uh, random yoga studio, let's, let's call it uh, uh, Blue Shirt Yoga, Blue right. Shirt Yoga, right? Blue Shirt Lo Yoga is located inside of Back Bay. You know, Blue Shirt Yoga, if, if let's say um, as part of their internship program, um, you know, they partner with at least one Boston public school, yeah. they'll go out and they'll, they'll have their uh, yoga instructors who are, who are the interns teach those, teach those classes either voluntary and it counts towards their hours. So that way you're killing two birds with two birds with one stone. I, I don't know exactly how it works, but you'd be killing two birds with like one stone. So it's like, let's take a look, um, especially with corporations, figure out how you can get into inner city communities, figure out how you can 
provide these services, you know, there's ways, you know, to make it so that, especially if you establish, you know, a portion of your business as a nonprofit, mm -hmm. there's ways to do all that stuff. And, and you'll actually be making a lot more money doing it volunteering. You right. know? So if you, if we start to think about that and think about how we can draw each other closer together, like fitness, there's no color when it comes to fitness. Right. Now, if we, if we, again, if we start breaking down the barriers to fitness, then we'll start to also break down the barriers around other things, you know, when it comes to creating dialogue and when it comes to, you know, having people that may not necessarily be face to face aside from this one particular situation, you know, now they become friends. Now they, now, hey, you know what? I'm going to go check out your restaurant. You come check out my restaurant in my neighborhood. Or better yet, we this class, you know, Gary teaches classes, uh, you know, in Roxbury on Wednesdays. I know I always go to, uh, you know, to his class in, in Quincy, but I'm going to go check out the class in Roxbury because X, Y, and Z goes to that class, and that's my new friend. Like these, you know, that it's literally, it, it's, it's that simple. If we started looking at things in that fashion, and if, you know, we start cooperating a lot more, especially the independents, right? This, it's a lot easier to do this as a small business and as an independent where you partner with maybe another business um, or partner with another uh, program or whatever the case may be, as opposed to if you're a large corporation. Um, mm -hmm. with, the, with the small businesses, you know, if we really start taking a look at like the mm -hmm. partnerships, um, small business is going to grow a lot more. Yeah. Right? Because again, it's the same thing. It's like, well, cool. I do X, Y, and Z. You do X, Y, and Z, but you, you do it on a Wednesday. I do it on a Tuesday. Okay. Well, tell all your people to come on Wednesday. And I'm going to tell all my people to come on, come on your Tuesday. And, and then what we're going to do is once a month on a Saturday, we're going to just get together. And we're going to get everybody together. Now, if right. we start looking at things in that way, where we're trying to cooperate instead of always trying to compete with each other, you know, then all these small businesses, like, it's like, okay, well, cool. Like first we're two people. Now another person comes and then another person and okay, well, I do t-shirts and I just do video. All right, cool. Well, you're part of us now. And now, now all of a sudden we're a group or we're a collective. Yeah. That looks a lot different. Yeah. And then we create a cross referral system. We're never having to worry about clients. Right. I'm not right. like I'm not. I'm not worried. Like if right now, if I partner with if I partner with you, and I was like, okay, I need all my people to go take Karen's class. Like that's just gonna grow your business. And then you're like, you know what, Gary's awesome. I need you. Everybody go take Gary's class right. now, right? And then everyone starts coming to my classes. How does that hurt each other's businesses? It right. doesn't. Right. You know? And then now all of a sudden, our people start to know each other. Now, if if this was to, you know, let's say this period was to end. And now all of a sudden it's like, you got all of a sudden a hundred new people from, from my referrals and I got a hundred new people, you know, from your referrals. And now those referrals start giving referrals to, 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 you know, to, to us collectively, then, mm -hmm. then our business, how can our business not grow? How can it not thrive? Right. It's just when people start getting greedy around that and just like, well, I don't want to give him too many referrals because now all of a sudden he's going to take all my business. Or right. if I get all the referrals and I'm like, all right, cool. Thank you. And I just keep, keep it moving. Like, you know, it's like one hand washes the other. And if we start to learn that as an industry, as a whole, and as people as a whole, right. then that will resolve a lot of, a lot of the issues that are going right on right now, especially when it comes to like civil unrest. And that's an approach that I think we could take, you know, um, from a fitness standpoint. And I would love to see that approach if we, if we're able to, you know, if you're a large corporation, if you're a small business, start partnering with these smaller programs, start partnering with these schools, start reaching out to police officers and, and firefighters and say, hey, what can I do? How can, how can we support each other? All it, all it does, all, all it will do will create positivity and it'll just create uh, more of a, a cohesive environment. Yep. I was thinking too, I mean, when I think about kids in school um, that have access to sports and I think of, you know, basketball and football and that kind of thing, although I don't really think about fitness and their access to fitness. I, I, I think of kids having probably pretty okay, I guess, access to sports. Although I seem to feel like over the years, even the concept of gym during, during school has kind of gone by the wayside. And then I, when you were saying about having trainers and maybe even yoga teachers go to schools to provide a service of teaching the kids, 
to show the kids, hey, this is something you could do to not only take charge of your health, but to develop a business. Um, that's a whole other aspect to kind of have a young black boy see in you, oh, that's something I could do. Like I never even thought I could do that, but I needed to see somebody who looked like me to give myself the validation and the permission to do it. So it all of a sudden opens their eyes to being an entrepreneur, starting a business in the fitness industry or the yoga industry. I remember I have a friend of mine from way back in the day um, teaching yoga. We started around the same time with our teacher and she created the Africa Yoga Project, which essentially trained hundreds of people in Kenya to teach yoga as a way to make money. And that was many years ago that she started that nonprofit. And I don't even know what the numbers are at this point, but she saw yoga teaching as a way that people in Kenya could make money. And she actually went to Kenya. She was actually living there at the time and that generated the idea. So she saw it as kind of a way to allow people in Kenya to earn money and also deal with just some of all of the issues that they were dealing with living in Kenya. And it just on a small scale seems to be similar to what you're saying, get access to kids, show them what's possible, give them the skills. And then maybe that even becomes an opportunity for them to create a business as a fitness professional. Definitely. And it just, at the very least, what it's going to do is just make them uh, aware of yeah. Just move uh, how they're supposed to move their body and aware of their health, and you know that that becomes really, really important. You know, so you know, like what you said, it's like if you've never seen, like I saw someone post a question on on Facebook the other day, like uh, how many African American teachers did you have growing up? Like and regular teachers, just regular teachers. Yeah, I was. And, thinking or, that. Or, when, or when was the first time you had an African American teacher? And I thought about it. And I was like whoa, it wasn't until I got to college. Like, yeah. that's, that's, that's insane. So it's like the same thing. Like, when we see coaches, um, you know, not everyone is going to be LeBron James, but you can get enough knowledge to be able to coach LeBron James, right, to become a better athlete. So with a lot of these kids, um, especially growing up in the inner city, you know, they may think about, well, my only way out is to become the athlete. And it's like, well, you can still be involved in sports and athletics, uh, well, I here's see a, here's not a, here's a, here's here's a, as big as LeBron as their ticket. Exactly, out. exactly. But you but can still be involved other. in sports, yeah. athletics, like you can be yeah. a yoga instructor, you can be, you know, an entrepreneur where you just run gyms, you know, you can right. be, uh, you know, you can be a trainer if you want to be a trainer, you can be a basketball coach and just specialize that, you can specialize in PT, OT, rehab, like they need to see these images and they right. need to see these, these, see these people and let them uh, you know, let us be the example to tell them like, hey, this is completely attainable. Or if if all you've been thinking about is, you know, business or 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 uh, becoming a lawyer or a doctor, like that traditional field is cool. But, you know, there's there's other fields that you may have be able to access and do really well from a financial standpoint and, and be happy doing it and wear your t-shirt and show us every single day and, you know, and, and all that. So I think that, you know, that becomes really important. It's like, you know, uh, having young kids have access to health and fitness programs aside from the sports. Cause the thing right. too is like, not everybody likes sports, Right. not everybody's going to like sports, but people may like to just move their body. They may like to, to do an animal flow where there's no free, there's no restriction as far as like your movements. And, and that's fine. Like people have that creativity. It's like whatever it is that you may like, our job as fitness professionals is to expose younger people to it so that they can grow up into adults that understand that they have so many different options. Like I like to bodybuild, I like martial arts, like I like yoga also too. If I never did yoga when I was younger, when it wasn't cool, and when, when guys used to make fun of me, all my friends, uh, you know, if I never did it, then I wouldn't realize all the benefits now. But yeah. I, I did it and I just chose to do it because one of my friends invited me. But had I, had I, had I, if I never got that invite, I would have never knew about it. And if it was for my, if I just listened to my friends, I would have never did it at all. Right. Um, and now, now it's like so mainstream that you see athletes doing it and you see, you know, um, you know, the 
biggest guys in the world that are inside of classes doing yoga and it's just so so mainstream now than years ago it wouldn't be like that now right. if if you are an instructor right now think about kids right now like we already know adults are more so into it we can we can go chase the adult but if i was to do a business right now and you know it in 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 it it was yoga you know I'm thinking about a, a major component. I'm thinking about a problem, and I'm gonna and, it, and it's gonna start with the youth because they're gonna grow up into into adults, and these are gonna be your people that like if they end up going to college, you know, and let's say they were doing a program all summer long. If I got, if I taught a Zoom class, it takes nothing for them to tell ten of their friends to join your Zoom class. So if you if you're looking at it also like from a business standpoint, it's a smart business move if you were to do that right now. Right. Um, and that was, to, that was to be like the start of your business. Right. I want to just mention too, again, since people can't see you, and I know that you used to do, I don't know if you still do a lot of bodybuilding. So yeah. I would say to the people who are not able to see him, he is a very large muscular person. <laughs> and I also want to just make a note that my introduction to yoga was because two guys introduced me to class, one of whom was a bodybuilder. I don't know if I ever told you this. And he yeah. was doing yoga as part of his bodybuilding routines. Like he was doing different postures. So he was the one that actually said to me, you need to come to this hot yoga class. It was my first teacher, Baron Baptiste in Cambridge. It's a really hard class. I'm integrating yoga poses into my bodybuilding routines. So it's kind of interesting when you say that, because I know in, in your credentials, you have bodybuilding on there, that that was a big part, is a big part of your life and yoga. So you were kind of in that before, like you say, guys in general were really embracing it as something that was yeah. something they could do. Yeah, I was always like, since I was younger, I was very much like when I thought about fitness, from the time I was younger, I just always remember asking why. Like they, they, I didn't, I didn't believe in absolute. So if someone told me like, oh, X, Y, and Z works, I'm like, all right, why? Like it may work for you, but does it work for everybody else? Right. You know? So I always, I always had to understand like the why behind things. So like with the yoga, like when I started thinking about the different moves, I was like, this, these are just warm up. These are dynamic flexibility exercises. It's a lot of the same moves that I would do for basketball before we had games and um, you know uh, for track or whatever the same way that like you know I would need that type of dexterity and mobility like it's the same exact moves and so I'm like what's the difference if I just take a class so then I just start, that's where I started taking the classes and what I noticed is that the more flexibility and mobility I got the better I recovered the bigger my muscles the, the better I could pose when I was on stage the more I could feel my muscles like when I would when I would strength train I'm like, why don't people do this? Like, I just, it, it just didn't, like, logically, it just, like, I just saw how the two went together, and I right. saw how the one could feed off of, one could feed off of another, and it's like, well, if I'm so tight, then how can a muscle grow if there's no space for that muscle to grow? It can't. Right. You know, so it only makes sense to lengthen those muscles out after you do your strength training, and, you know, if you're able to go through a greater range of motion, then that's one of the key components to actually creating more muscle is to be able to have more range of motion, more time under tension, be able to hold stuff longer. And that's yeah. what a lot of yoga is, controlling your breathing. When I'm on stage and I'm posing, I have to control my breathing patterns. I have to control my abdominals, control my core. Same thing I do in yoga class. Yeah. The two go, this is literally the same exact thing, the same type of breathing, the same way you want to hold your core and to be able to move your extremities while maintaining that tension. It's the same exact thing. So if, if anything, it just helped me out on stage. That's it's great. My, it's, my, it's my secret weapon. That's <laughs> great. I might have to go on Google and Google for some pictures of you doing bodybuilding. I don't know if they're out there on the interwebs. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're out there. They're out there. So I want to just, I don't even have a watch on, so I'm just, I want to be mindful of your time. Can you, in just this one last piece, can you give just an idea of kind of, I mean, you're kind of in the beginning of this journey in terms of you recently left kind of the corporate fitness. You, within the past three to four months, have kind of embarked on this new journey, although it's been brewing in you for a long time. Where do you want to really go with this? Just give us an idea of that. So where I want to go is majority of my business to be virtual training, which I'm there right now. 
um, I want to be able to offer these strength camp classes. Uh, so the strength camp classes um, in multiple cities, also multiple states, because I'll go anywhere. That's what I tell people. Like, that's my tagline. I'll go anywhere. Um, I bring the gym to you. Um, so being able to offer this service, because I think, you know, um, gyms, I can see them being successful, but I can also see where there's going to be a huge reluctance for people to uh, to go in. Um, and I think, you know, what I'm going to be able to do is to be able to get out, get my programming out to people, also partner with corporations to run, you know, their wellness programming. Um, mm -hmm. As I continue to partner with other instructors and um, other programs, you know, so us collectively going in and into a Blue Cross Blue Shield, into a uh, Johnson & Johnson, you know, into a Fidelity and being like, hey, you know what, we can handle the entirety of your staff and provide, uh, you know, fitness, provide nutrition counseling, provide uh, meditation work, uh, mobility work, um, you know, a lot of different components um, that are necessary in order to keep their people more efficient and, and to, the, you know, to keep their people a lot healthier, you know, so that's going to be another component that I really want to offer and work with. Um, and then, um, you know, with the business, still do my one-on-ones, you know, still do stuff like in person, um, you know, eventually when all this stuff opens up, uh, doing more lecturing, um, doing more around education, doing more around the mentorship component of it. But the two major things that I'm trying to grow right now is going to be the virtual with the virtual, most of it is going to be one-on-one -on -one in groups. Um, the next step is for me to add in a strength camp virtual class. Um, so that's going to come in September. Um, and then, and then uh, scaling my business. So then I can have uh, more of like a subscription service. So if let's say you can't make a class, you know, you can still access the weekly training videos and oh, yeah. can, out through my subscription service. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And I love the way you're kind of thinking about it as the in-person and the online. So you're kind of getting in both places. So that's, that's really great. Well, thank you so much. This is like my second appointment with you uh, since uh, all of this has started and we've been on lockdown quarantine. So I really appreciate it. And I've loved this conversation. This is like me getting to know you again in a new way. So I really I'm kind of selfish in a way that I get to use my podcast as an excuse to interview you. <laughs> I know what you're doing. So thank you very, very much for doing this. And um, once it's all buttoned up and online, I will send you the link to it as well. Okay. Awesome, Karen. I appreciate it. Awesome. Right. Awesome. Let's, let me do a, let me do a selfie because I'm going to post you. Okay. okay you, re you ready? All right. Perfect. All right. Perfect, Karen. Yeah. Yay. All right. All right. So I'll All right. talk to you soon and um, keep up the amazing work. You're always an inspiration. I might need to book you like every week so I can get my daily dose of inspo from you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I, I love it. I love it. All right, Karen. Enjoy. Thank you. For, right. Thank you for having me. People that are listening, thank you for listening. Oh, and, and you know, one more thing. Tell them how to find you on, on the IG there. Okay. So, so on Instagram, I'm Gary. G A double R R Y underscore Sanu Fitness. Sanu is S I N E W F I T N E S S. Yeah. Um, and then and then on Facebook, Facebook is just Sanu Fitness. Or if you want to find my personal page, it's Gary G A double R Y Sanon S A N O N. Um, and then on LinkedIn, I'm just Gary Sanon. You know, so you can connect with me um, through any one of those social medias. Yep. And, and I'm on SanuFitness.com. SanuFitness. Oh, that's the website. That's the website. Oh, that's awesome. Sanu Fitness. All right. So I'll include all those links in the show notes for this episode. So if people listen to it on my website, they'll catch those. Um, and then when it goes live, I'll post it and connect to you on the link. So they'll be able to find you that way too. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, thanks right, so much. Yeah. Oh, and one more thing. If they live in Boston and they're listening, how do they find your class schedule? So my class schedule will either be on my Instagram uh, okay. or it's going or it's going to be on my Facebook. Got it. Okay. okay. And then they can just, they can just reach out to me directly. Um, if you want to email me, it's info 
at sanufitness.com. And then I can just let you know uh, when the classes are this week. As of right now, it's Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. in East Boston. And then right. Sundays at 9 a.m. in Quincy. And then if you want to, if you want to, um, put together a group on your own, I can come to you and I would just teach the class too. Awesome. Awesome. That's yeah. good to know. That opens up possibilities for people. Definitely. definitely yeah. Definitely. All right. Well, thanks so much. Right. I'll talk to you soon. Right. Okay. Right. Enjoy. Bye, Karen. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to Conversations for Yoga Teachers. I am your host, Karen Fabian, and I just want to remind you, if you would like to get on the wait list for my two premier programs, the Blueprint Learning Program and my mentorship program, all you need to do is visit my website, barebonesyoga.com, and the links to get on the wait list for both of these programs are right on the homepage. Thanks for listening and see you on the next episode.